Uh, we have a very special song to play right now. Yeah, special song. That's, a, that's good, Lena. Yeah. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be my? Could you be my? Won't you be my neighbor? Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Sounded almost like that. Hmm. That's a kalimba. And that is, I guess that is the sound on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Hmm. Who knew? Who the fuck knew? It's craziness is what it is. It's crazy kalimba time here. What's up? Well, uh, Lena has cataracts. I, had, I do. I have a cataract. We've, we've diagnosed it officially. And it kind of moves around a little bit. And that's why she has relief someday. Don't get me wrong. The lutein that you're taking is helping your eyes tremendously. And it will continue to. Okay? Yeah. Don't panic. One thing you cannot do is panic. Right. Right. You know. And one thing you needn't worry about is surgery. Okay, which is where people usually immediately go. Right. Oh, no. Cataract surgery. I remember Rita had all kinds of problems with her eyes and she had Lasix and she had cataract surgery and she had all this stuff. But meanwhile, she was taking medications that were deteriorating her ocular nerves. You know that, right? Well, I didn't know that, but um, it doesn't surprise me to hear it. Yeah. Get my face over here. You're going to have to put that. You're going to fix this yourself today. All right. Um... Okay, so you want me to put this back on the table? Yeah. I'm going to make some soup. Oh, tomato soup today. All right. Tomato soup. Hmm. So we found a product for her. They have a product for everyone, everything, folks. Hmm. And these are cataract dissolving drops made in the UK. Yeah. You won't hear about them over here. They make them for animals and for people, and their success rate is apparent. And they're like affiliated with the Better Business Bureau, and they're legit. And we ordered this cataract drops, right? Yes, because yours is just in the beginning stages, and you're going to that's going to clear it up. Okay, Johnny. Yeah, it's gonna be good. You'll see. Where are you? Back here. All right. Um, it's tomato soup. Yeah. You got to stick me in the front here, too. This is not good. Mm. You can just have my arm, I guess. I don't know. Does this thing go any smaller? Mm. No, it don't. Yeah. Uh, no, it don't. No, it don't. Hold on. No, don't go any smaller. So what, I have to just put this all the way down here and so that it's looking up at you like they're the big tall guy? This does. This is no good. Mm. Try it this way. Forget it, Johnny boy. Johnny pants. Johnny pants. Look at these pants. That'll do. That shows my big strong arms. All right. Your arms do look big and strong in that picture, right? <laughs> yes, they do. All right, so you want tomato soup. So we're making tomato soup from scratch, right? Oh, boy. I don't know if this is the last of them tomatoes. No, you got more. So what's up? Nothing. We've got a nice day ahead, right? And uh, I want you to do very little. And we're not going to eat very much, okay? 
you know, we have a lot of leftover cornbread, uh, spelt bread, or whatever kind of bread that was. Teff. Teff flour. Mm. We made a bread with teff flour yesterday. The birds are going apeshit for this bread. Mm. Well, it's an ancient grain. Mm -hmm. T-E-F-F. -F, right. And it is uh, highly assimilable. It's a uh, complete protein right in itself right it's one of those greens that's a complete protein right so mix that with a couple of other flowers right and some uh coconut oil and and uh, oat milk and a couple of eggs and we that's a complete meal so we have a lot of leftover bread from yesterday and now we're just making a soup. Yeah, if I could open this tomato box, I'd really be on top of the world. But it's just not possible. She has terrible arthritis in her hands. Yes, I do. They're very bad this day. Yeah. It's that cold winter weather. Affects the joints. And you can take as much stuff as you want. It doesn't seem to help. Mm. So anyone who's not going through that must be going through something else because it just wouldn't be fair. You know, I knew something was happening uh, many years ago. It was just another one of those great instances where I would say it to my mother, like, why do I tell this woman anything? I said, there's something wrong with, with my hands. What? There's nothing wrong with your hands. Your hands are nice. I was like, no, no. There, there's something wrong with them. They, there are days where they, they don't obey me. They don't do what I want them to do. They just completely freeze up and they don't behave. They weren't, they, they weren't painful yet then. Mm. Now the pain has settled into the joints and I have to continually massage them. And again, I remember my godmother went through this and she would explain to me how bad arthritis in the hands could be. And I really sympathized with her then and I certainly empathize with her now. My mother would just say, no, everything is, your hands are fine. Everything was always fine. Everything was always fine. So, it, you know, matters concerning health and stuff. I guess I'm like, like a lot of people. I was always on my own. Mm -hmm. My mother was in denial of there ever being like a possibility that something could be wrong. Mm -hmm. No matter what it was. I had like a, a lump, a cyst on my breast when I was in my 30s. And I said to my mother, <laughs> I'm really a little, a little upset. I, I have to go get this cyst excised. And this is like, you know, this is concerning me. Mm. And she, she was a cyst? What kind of cyst? You don't got a cyst. You, immediately, I don't have a cyst. Mm -hmm. Have you ever? Really? I mean, someone telling you this and like you're, you're trying to talk to them about that you're worried? And I said, well, it's on my right breast and it's kind of like uncomfortable and it's kind of like scaring me and I made an appointment and I'm going to go. And she said, oh, well, then you take care of that. You take care of that right away. I said, I am taking care of it right away. Okay, and then it'll be fine, and then it's nothing. You know. And then I remember on the day after, no, it was the day before. No, it was the, yeah, it was the day before. She calls me up in my office and she says, 
I should go with you to, to the cyst thing. <laughs> I said, what? You should go. I said, no, Chris is going. Chris is taking me. Why, why do you want to go with me all of a sudden? Well, I just, I should. I'm the mother and I should go. I guess because she, and I figured it out. It's because all she was thinking about it and she wanted to be able to tell her friends. This is exactly what she did. She wanted to be able to tell her friends, I helped my daughter through this thing. Mm -hmm. Like she thought, she gave it some thought and she was like, gee, I guess that is kind of a big deal. And if it is something and she's really got breast cancer, I want to be able to tell everyone that I've been with her with it through the beginning of it. And I know that's what, I know my mother well enough to know that that's the way her mind works. It always has to do with her. Mm -hmm. It's so insincere. Everything right down the line is how it's going to reflect on her and make her look. So I said, well, if you want to come, I said, you know, you're way in the other direction. We're going, you know, we, we, it's right by our house to get on. the. And she was like, well, you come and get me. I'm the mother. <laughs> and I said, you know what? It doesn't work that way. I'm not going to go out of my way on this day. And, and you know, and I didn't even say it, but I was thinking the last person I need there is you. You are never, you just want to come so you can chat with my husband and make it a social event because all of a sudden your schedule opened up and you have nothing better to do that day and you want to just be there so that you can say you fucking did something. Mm -hmm. But you can't even get there on your own steam. So you want me to, you want us to pick you up and then maybe go to lunch later if you're, if, if we, if you really angle your cards right because she was a good one. Oh, let's go out later. I'll, I'll treat. Yeah, right. She got her little day out. Mm. And she was a hero. She can tell everyone she helped her daughter. Well, didn't know I was going to think about that today. But it's the kind of thing that came to mind. As soon as something was ever wrong with me health-wise, she really wanted nothing to do with it. She didn't want to hear about it. She didn't want to know about it. But uh, if it could somehow, she, she would give it some thought. This is such a, a, an operation with her. And you're so, you're so intuitive. You, she couldn't hide anything from you. Right. It's painful having a mother like, having a biological mother like that. It's painful. But it's something else. And it's something that I realized not very long ago. She is a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And narcissists don't live by the same rules that, have, that other people do. Right. And so is my biological father. And so is our, both of my brothers. They're narcissists. And if you grow up being the black sheep, being known as the black sheep in a family... It's usually because you're surrounded by narcissists and they know you're not like them and it's easier to just point a finger and say that there's something wrong with you. Right. Do narcissists know that there's something wrong with them? No. It's not been it's not been my experience that narcissists are are aware of their narcissism, so to speak. They're so wrapped up in thinking that they are great that, um, but are, are, so I've heard, okay, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I've also heard the theory that narcissists are deeply insecure. No, they can become insecure later as their uh, failures to connect begin to compound during their life journey and they start realizing that one by one, everyone is onto them and all of their relationships or perceived relationships are failing. And that becomes just an insecurity of what am I going to do now? No one is buying my bullshit. So are narcissists bad people? Hmm. Bad is a strange word 
to use to describe people. Do narcissists have souls? They do, but they are deeply, deeply compromised and damaged by many lifetimes of wrong-headed decisions. And it's the it's the luck of the draw. You're either you're either one of these souls that's really going to seek enlightenment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're either really going to seek enlightenment and and want this for yourself, mm. and want your relationships to work, and want to serve, and want to love, and be able to see your shortcomings and say, "Aha! Uh -huh, okay, I learned from this. I'm going to do better now, and I'm going to do a whole lot better." Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make God proud of me. And you're either going to do that or you're going to fail at this life again and have to come back again. And this can go on forever. Literally forever. Hey, they is me. We want to add some garlic to that uh, broth so uh, you can pause it for a second if you like. All right. This one, Jesus Christ, but you're telling me that uh, it's a number nine day. What does that mean? You, uh, that everything is going great. Right. And and that that uh, solutions. OK, I'm as excited as you are. This cataract stuff is going to do the trick. It's going to clear, clear you up. It's going to clear it up for you, Lena. Mm -hmm. And you'll be you'll have very clear vision in that eye that's been giving you trouble. But, you know, we don't we. We out here, we search for your resources and we find them. Sometimes it takes a while. And I'm sure you ordered the right one, but you can have them confirm it with you. And it's probably for the good. Yeah, because they have ones for pets and they have one. That, that, Har Harmon could have used those. Yeah. Well, Hermione helped to guide you to that. Oh, that's great. Oh, crud on the back face. It's all right. We'll clean that up. Uh, because Herman had cataracts at the end there. Mm. Herman had cataracts. Pretty, pretty serious. I could see them starting in. He had, he had compromised vision at the end. Um, poor baby. But it didn't get bad enough. He died before anything like that could happen. But, um, Butchie had bad cataracts. Uh, he went bl completely blind. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Just the way it didn't happen uh, to Herman. Right. Wow. Okay, so this stuff is going to work. Yep, it's going to be good. Promise. Okay, and again, you know what? I trust it because it's made, approved in the UK. The UK did it. Mm-hmm. Which is like, oh, I gotta put salt in this container. Well, we'll do it in a little while. Don't sweat it now. All right, let me wipe this stove down. It's still a little bit uh, hot. I want to keep my stove clean. So today, I'm doing a show off your breads. All right. I don't know what there is to really show off, but these are the breads we made yesterday. Mm. There's a ton left. We gave some to the birds this morning. They went cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Mm. We gave it. We gave them a nice bunch of uh, breadcrumbs from these. This is the this is the uh, teff flour bread. Also, we use tapioca flour in there, which is very good and makes a good consistency. We used monk fruit, which is healthy for animals. Monk fruit is a healthy uh, sweetener. If you bake with xylitol, do not give that to your animals. That will poison them. In fact, don't bother using xylitol. Now that monk fruit is available and even cheaper, there's no reason to use xylitol. Xylitol is a sugar alcohol, but it wrecks havoc on um, the system of animals. And I'm led to think that it can't be the greatest thing for people either. Honestly, you're right. If it's going to, like, 
kill your dog. Why, why bother with that? You know, even if they say it's safe, I would stay away from xylitol and go strictly for the monk fruit sweetener. Mm. Again, it's cheaper and tastes more like sugar. Mm. Tastes more like sugar. Um, okay, what's going on now? Not a hell of a lot. Play a little piano, I suppose. All right. It's that kind of day. Yeah. You're right. All right, let me figure out what I'm going to put this soup in. Mm. 